Uh, let's make sure that's recording. You also have a podcast, correct? Uh, yeah. 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 Just news yeah. commentary stuff. So you're a professional. Here we oh, go. yeah, totally. <laughs> with, your, with your purple microphone. Oh, Look yeah. That thing. Is that purple or am I colorblind? Snowball purple, yeah. Ah, Snowball, that's the one that picks up everything, though. Correct. Pretty everything much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bought one of these because it only I like picks that. me up. Um, oh, nice. And so, yeah, this is one I had a long time ago and literally had it in the closet for years. Didn't break it out until COVID. Um, I actually have something just like the one you're using mm -hmm. at my podcasting partner's house, who is not too far from me. And then we're like, well, let's record from home to be safe. And so uh, we just moved to this and it's it's functioned. So it's fine. Yeah, my, I did two and a half years on my Samsung Q2U or 2UQ or yes. Q, Q something. And it's good enough. And then eventually I was like, right. you know what? It's time. I'm gonna yeah, make you're it. doing it for a while. You got into it. All right, let's make it better. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Hemet Meta, okay. and I'm hopeful that I said that right because I probably butchered yes. it and I don't know how to edit video and I'm too lazy to edit the audio, <laughs> at least for that. So welcome to the show. I'm, I'm excited to have you here. And, and then just for me to you, I've been reading your work for many, 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 I don't know if years is accurate because I don't know how to quantify it. But um, oh, I've enjoyed, Thank you, sir. enjoyed your stuff. Yeah, but welcome to the show, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is, uh, no, this is fun. And I, I always appreciate when people read anything you put out there. You, you make stuff, you make a podcast, you make mm -hmm. anything. And it's like, oh, wow. It actually does have reception somewhere. People that's read always it. nice. Yeah. Yeah. People read it. People listen to it. Yeah. Oddly enough. So I've been transcribing these because I'm ridiculous and need more things to do with my uh -huh, life. Uh -huh. And um, I had hoped that nobody would listen to, would read the transcripts. And that is not what the analytics say. And I'm like, man. So yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's always fun to see when, when you put, you put it out there, people will find it. It's yeah, amazing. Sweat and carpal <laughs> tunnel into something and somebody, um, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, um, tell the listeners who you are, why you are, sure. what, what you, what you do, why that should matter. And then we'll kind of roll with it because yeah. um, this one will be a slightly different than what we normally do, but not overly crazy. Sure. Either. So the, the short version, if you aren't familiar with anything I do, um, so I'm Hammond Meta. I write at a website called friendlyatheist.com, mostly for the, I've been doing it for like, I don't even know anymore, 14 some years now. Um, like every day it is now like the, I, I've been doing it full time for a long time now. And basically what I'm writing about is religion and politics and, and mostly uh, stories about religion as they come into the news. It's less about convincing people God doesn't exist which sure. is my position. I just genuinely don't care if it's anyone else's and more <laughs> about like, uh, I guess from my perspective, I care less about trying to convince people to become atheists mm -hmm. and more like, let me just put out there my issues with religion as it relates to what we're seeing in the news. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I don't think it's a virtue. And I think that's very easy to point out. And maybe along the way, people who are doubting or who have questions about religion or who see it as all good, um, for whatever reason, I know plenty of religious people don't, but um, they'll see it and maybe they'll spur their uh, thinking about it too. So that's kind of the main thing I've been doing. I also do stuff on YouTube and podcasting to talk about news and politics, but really it's been the website for a long time. I've done some books too, but like that's the website and comments. Yeah. I didn't realize that you'd read a book, read a book, written a book. <laughs> One or two I've read. Yeah, no, I've, I've been... written a couple, but they've been, um, like the weird thing is it, takes a lot of time and mm -hmm. you put a lot of effort into it. And I feel like in terms of response and reaction to anything I do, the books have not gotten that. Um, maybe the first one a long time ago, but like really the website has always gotten more response and more conversations going. And so it's like, okay, you know what? I can tell I am not the sort of person whose books are going to spur giant conversations, mm -hmm. but the articles and the news commentary can and so let me try to be helpful in that regard. Yeah, yeah. What I was going to say is I didn't realize you'd written a book until I began deciding whether or not I wanted to email you. And I was sure, like, oh, yeah. Like, I was like, should I? So normally when I bring someone on, like I'll read their works before right, I bring them right. on. And I was like, but I've been reading him for so long. I'm not going to buy Yeah, and book. I think if I you actually, <laughs> I, I think if you actually read any, there, there's been a couple of books and they're very different. Um, but I think like one of them, the first one I wrote, 
uh, which was about me visiting churches Ooh. about 15 some odd years ago, a little longer than that. And it was not saying I'm so naive that I don't know what I'm stepping into, but more like, uh, hey, look, I'm an atheist. I'm your target audience if these are seeker services or mm -hmm. trying to reach out to the unbelievers. Well, that's me. I'm going to go to your church without telling you. And here's my first impressions. Here's what I noticed. And while I, I didn't make anything up, like I stand by everything I wrote, but it's very clear I'm way nicer in that book than I feel like I am now. <laughs> um, so like I, uh, I've heard that from some people who have checked out the books where it's like, it, it, there is a distance between what you wrote then and what I write about now. Yeah. Um, cause like friendly atheist is, this, is this moniker I've had forever, not because I'm nice, but because I just wanted to force people to put that word next to atheist. <laughs> um, but I do feel I'm a lot more aggressive, yeah. not mean necessarily, but just like, I'm not putting up with this. <laughs> Why? So were um, you just like caging yourself in the book and, and you wanted to be nice or has something I would give Shifted. religious people and those pastors who mm -hmm. by and large are nice and well-intentioned and we just believe different things about God. Like I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, but when some things are happening, uh, whether it's a social issue and their commentary on that or politics or anything, like I feel way less of a desire now to give them the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. It's like, this isn't a close call. This isn't purely theology that we have a difference here. Like you're literally hurting people. I don't really feel like, well, it's their religion. Let me give them some leeway there. Yeah. Like I, that has really gone away. And I kind of uh, want them to speak out more against what I consider to be pretty obvious problems within church, within church culture and all of that. Um, and a lot of times it seems like some of the people with large platforms who have no problem offering commentary on other issues are yeah. weirdly silent on the stuff uh, on certain other issues. Yeah. Yeah. So just going to your website yeah. um, and I'll have that linked everywhere that sure, be, sure. but honestly, you could just Google that name and it, it comes up pretty easily. Um, where does all that come from? Cause like, I'll go to your site a couple of times a week. And I literally will think to myself, I intentionally engage in these conversations and you have so many more stories and different things and just all, is, are, are people sending you these things or yeah. are you like just figuring out like Google words that like ding and alert you when crazy <laughs> bat, everything crazy. The answer is happening? yes to all of that. Um, so when I do have an RSS feed, uh, that lets me just say, hey, this blog, whenever they update, I want an update on it. When this uh, YouTube channel posts an update, I want that update. Um, that has been always been like the primary source. It's like, I like getting news from these sources because I trust them. I know they're, uh, whatever they comment on it, I know the news of what they're putting out there is not a lie. It's like, oh, we have the recording. We have the audio. Good. I can work with that. So yes, there are some places that are my go-to places, but actually what's changed probably the most in the 10 years or so recently is as more people are familiar with me and the website, yeah, they will send more stories that I couldn't get from my usual sources because they're local, because they're concerned about something happening in their community and no one's covering it um, and things like that. So th those to me are the more interesting stories because I can offer commentary on whatever Trump is doing, but honestly, plenty of people are doing that. It's stuff that's happening locally. That's not getting attention that maybe I can be the person to help you shine a light on it. I'm not going to pretend to be an objective reporter on this stuff. What I hope people get from it and I mean this sincerely, I hope like religious people, devoutly religious people who disagree with me about the God thing can go there and say, whatever I said uh, with my opinion, which is very obvious, this is the video of what happened. I'm not taking it out of context. I wouldn't want to do that. This is legitimately what they said. The transcript is there. And then sure, I'll offer my own opinion on it. But I would hope they see it and they're like, okay, this pastor really did say this. Or this politician who is Christian said this thing or did this thing. Here are the links. One thing that almost eh, infuriates me as much as a blogger can get infuriated is when I go to certain religious sites who I also, I, I want to know what they're saying. So I subscribe mm -hmm. to them. I, I read what they say. 
when they comment on things, but they don't provide any of that stuff. Yeah. I've seen this on a number of Christian sites where they're like, uh, politician X said this, and how dare they do this? Um, I don't know when this is coming up, but like, just for example, over the weekend, a Democrat in the House offered a prayer to open the first session of Congress. That's the thing they do every day. Not a big deal. You would never hear about it because honestly, who cares? And at the very end of it, he said, in honor of the record number of women who were elected to Congress this year, he ended his prayer by saying, amen, and a woman. Is that the context for that? I've seen That's that literally the context. And I looked it up because I was like, why are people so mad about this? Because mm. uh, I heard various things saying, one, he thinks amen is a reference to men because he's dumb and that's not the case. He's a minister. He knows what it means. Um, and two, they're like, is he trying to be gender inclusive, something, something? And he's like, no, I was just honoring all the women that were in the room. Like, and I wanted to give them like a little punny shout out. And I'm like, OK, harmless thing that this guy did. Yeah. I've heard other people do it, too. It's not really? new. It's it's honestly a dad joke for a congressman yeah. in the yeah. doing that honor. Um, but that's the thing. It's like I read so many people who are conservative uh, denouncing what he did without pointing to the context of what he said or telling everyone what he said or why he said it. And it's very, very easy to say, here's the video. Here's literally what he said. And to his local newspaper, here's how he justified what he did. Like, tell me where I'm getting it wrong, because I'm yeah. not. Yeah. And then we can have a discussion about it if you thought it was whatever, not you, but like blasphemous or whatever. Fine, yeah. we can have that discussion. But at least those facts are there. I'm putting it out there for you. Like, I would genuinely hate it if someone said you quoted a pastor, you went off on him because he did this thing, but you missed the point of what he was doing or you you misinterpreted what mm -hmm. he said. Because mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to and I don't need to. There's plenty of inf there's plenty of stuff to talk about without m purposely misinterpreting people. So anyway, <laughs> that's just what I'm saying. Like, I, I try to provide that in all these articles. Here's the primary source. Here's the video. Here's the transcript. Like, you can't disagree with me on that stuff. Yeah. What you take away from it, sure, but yeah. not the rest of it. Yeah, I, I did not know the context of that. I read it and I was like, oh, that's yeah. funny. And I moved on about my business. Because honestly, like, <laughs> right, they, like right. I don't even remember. And it's been a long time since I studied that word in Hebrew. Um, and yeah. just for just for clarity, I meant like I went to Liberty and I am yeah. not that anymore. Right, thank, right. Thank, well, I'm still that person. <laughs> I'm still that person. I didn't, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a different, I'm not saying that well. For context, people, it's after no, that. I, it's, it's I hear what you, evening, so. I got you completely. And believe me, you're not the only person I've yeah. talked to who has gone there or another other, uh, I would, I guess I would call fundamentalist Christian mm -hmm. schools. Like, that's not surprising at all. But yeah, I would hope that anyone seeing yeah. it would just say, okay, that's a fair uh, synopsis of what yeah. happened. Yeah. And now but, we can have that discussion. Yeah. I mean, a dad joke with a Hebrew word and honestly, amen is like loosely interpreted. I think it actually means something closer to like certainly or with certainty. It's sure. It, and, and now they, so be it. I think I you're think right so. about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So even if you said a woman, who cares? Like that's, that's <laughs> on, on a, that's a platinum religious dad joke. Um, right. Exactly. Yeah. And, why, and again, to see people complaining about it and it's like one, he's a minister Two, uh, he's trying to, yeah honor people not blaspheme or something like that it's like this is absurd and so yeah. for example like that's one that people would send to me and say hey i haven't heard you comment on this thing that just happened what do you have to say about this mm -hmm. and that's kind of how it usually ends up here so it's a mix of telling people something that happened that they should know about it's a mm -hmm. mix of trying to alert people to something that happened or debunking misinterpretations like that one um, before they get out of hand to the extent that anyone cares what I have to say about it. Yeah. Are you willing to, um, to critique religion as a whole, I guess? On, yeah. On, yeah. Um, so it depends question, on what, like, uh, uh, so uh, my, so a question that I wrestle with yeah. is that, so my pastor is, and I'm going to loosely quote him on this, Yeah. but basically that, that the role of a pastor in America today because of m biblical illiteracy and people really having a social club that's like Kiwanis with Jesus yeah. and not, not actually a faith, just, you know, just people that we hang out with and we talk right. about God. 
but it's there's no works or anything with that that mm -hmm. that like pastors jobs are basically like hospice care for the church like it's it's in the death throes and we're just given palliative care so that it's it's on its way to decline and die and everybody's aware of this and nobody wants to talk about it because that's the way that it is at least that's and that's I'm what a pastor badly, friend of yours said to yeah, you yeah yeah that, that's that's huh. the role of a pastor is i'm just currently managing decline like we're yeah. just trying to be as i mean as someone as who wouldn't necessarily be upset by that decline i don't think that's necessarily what's going on really um i th i feel i don't have the number in front of me so i am pulling this out of nowhere but so correct me if i'm wrong but i i do think what i've seen is the churches that happen to be growing uh relatively speaking even though religion is on a decline the ones that are still growing despite that are kind of the ones that are more devout more in depth that take more of your life take over more of your life um and they seem to be doing okay so the people who want it those right. churches are really growing i if the the Kiwanis club jesus stuff yeah maybe maybe they're dying off but again like it's not that they're coming over to my side necessarily mm -hmm. um i think every survey that i tend to see it will show a rise in the number of people who are not affiliated with an organized religion which is what you're referring to i think mm -hmm. but it's not a giant rise in atheism so like believe me they're not coming to my club anytime soon so it's not like i'm celebrating necessarily or and, and i don't yeah. don't even care if they do but um i think a lot of people have I've given talks about this where I try to explain why that change is happening. And there is a mix for me, like of different ingredients. One of them being, it's very easy to explore your doubts if you have them, where so many atheists I could point you to have told me that when they went to church, because they did as kids, and they had questions about their faith, they were told to have faith or don't ask the question <laughs> or something like that. Now, I've met a lot of Christians who vehemently agree with me that that's a horrible thing like you I'm should be those. able to yes. you should be able to answer those questions and i mean kudos to christian apologists who try to do that like mm -hmm. that's a good thing to be able to do because you should be able to wrestle with these questions but a lot of atheists will say they had questions they didn't have a safe way to ask those questions but I, we're about the same age i would think like when the internet came along and you could explore that stuff privately and without having to ask the pastor or anything or ask mm -hmm. your parents, um, all of a sudden it opened this door to like, oh, these other people have had these same questions. Yeah. Um, the answers that I'm seeing make more sense than what I'm getting in church. And that's one reason. So that to me is a big one. Like, yeah. I think Google has probably led more people to atheism than any other <laughs> source you could think of. Yeah. Um, another reason I think, and this part of it is scandals within the church where it's very easy to just see like, okay, well, these are religious people who ought to be better in many ways, because that's certainly what they seem to think. And yet you can see visible uh, examples of it, whether it's the Catholic church and their scandals or pastors doing who knows what, hey, you're from Liberty, <laughs> or whether it's, or whether it's like, um, purity For context, culture. I was blocked by everybody in leadership at Liberty. So I would, um, yeah, literally I am, uh, they would, they send me letters still saying, Hey, you should come to whatever, whatever, and donate money to whatever. <laughs> and I'll respond being like, yeah, but you don't, I paid for the right to critique my own university <laughs> and you silenced me. Right. And then when I bite you onto the show, you silenced me. So <laughs> why would I give you any more of my money? I yes. gave you a lot of my money. And you're, you wanted to be there, presumably, and they're kind of pushing you away from it. Yeah. Now, imagine if you're having doubts about being there or part of a church yeah. that is similar. And yeah. they're basically saying, yeah, we don't, we're not trying to help you out here with your questions or anything. Yeah, we really just so, still need your money. So I'm 38. How old are you? I'm curious if uh, we are the same Am age. I 38? I'm either 38 or very close to it. I think I'm 37. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about it for a second. Time loses all meaning. I, I'm lose 37. So we basically <laughs> grew up at, around that same age where yeah. the internet became a thing when we were young. Mm -hmm. And so like, I certainly remember um, I wasn't Christian, but when I grew up and had religious doubts about my parents' faith, like I certainly went online late at night when they couldn't see me and asked those questions. And man, I'm sure the sites I stumbled upon were totally shady, but <laughs> what I read and what I heard people saying, it's like, oh, yeah. I don't think my religion is wrong. I think 
religion is wrong. Yeah. And the more I looked into that as I grew older, it's like, yeah, I'm pretty much sure I was right to begin with. Yeah. Nothing has swayed me otherwise. But anyway, I was going to say church scandals and the hypocrisy is certainly a thing. And mm -hmm. that hasn't gone away <laughs> right. in subsequent years. And I think another thing that uh, has that is also true is for a lot of people our age who came up when George W. Bush was in office for eight years, you actually saw what happened when someone who wears his religion on his sleeve makes policies that a lot of people disagree with. And all of a sudden, those two things are mixed together. So mm -hmm. if you are, uh, even if you grew up as a conservative Christian, but if you didn't like how his presidency went, you were like, I don't want to be a part of any of that. Yeah. And I think that went into overdrive with Trump. It's like how many, I'm sure you have plenty of people you know too, where, you know, fine, we're Christian, but I can't defend the stuff he's doing. Yes. And or, and I can't defend the religious people who I once saw as leaders who are glomming onto him. So what do you do with that? It's one thing to say, okay, I don't vote for the guy, but what do you do with a faith that does not teach you that that sort of thing is bad? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, all of these things coming together. And for me, I feel like all of that came together in like the mid 2000s. And I've seen it in practice for the past several years. So I forgot yeah. what the question was, but yeah. all of that stuff kind of came together. So that's kind of where I'm coming from on all yeah. this, where um, it's very, it, it wasn't even like, oh, I read a Richard Dawkins book. No, that, that existed, but I was an atheist so long before that came up. So and now, oh, I was what I was going to say is I think with all those things happening, you see a lot of people saying, OK, you know what? I may believe in God, but I have a big problem with organized religion or yes. the church I grew up with or the mm -hmm. faith I grew up with. So I don't think I can call myself a label that says I'm an evangelical, I'm non-denominational or I'm whatever. Uh, OK, maybe I believe in something, but I don't think I'm one of those people. Yeah. And so they yeah. go away. So, but they're not atheists. And so I see this rise in the non religiosity. But to go back to the thing you were saying about your pastor friend, that desire for community and having a group. And I have said, I'm not saying this for the first time at all. I, gen I, I have so much respect for those churches that eh, let's say they're not harmful in the political sense or social issues. But they do provide a community. They do provide, if you want to volunteer, they give you a way to do that. If you want a job, they give you a network for that. If you're sick, they will help you out. If you go through a, a loss, a personal loss, they will help you get through that. There is no functional equivalent of that in the atheist world. And mm -hmm. that's a problem for us that I've seen yeah. various attempts to try to fix almost always unsuccessfully. Hmm. And so I don't know that it's going away for good. Like, yeah. I think there will always be that desire and religion happens to be a very powerful glue to hold that together. Because if you take God out of that picture, and I've seen this from various atheist attempts to try to recreate church, but without God, yeah. they don't work. Right. The, the religious glue is very important to that. Yeah, I'm going to push in on that a bit more in a second, because one of the questions is very similar to what you just said, mm -hmm. but I'd like you to get specific. But I want to give some context for those that are listening. So I've seen the demographics of the show overall. Yeah. So there's a big chunk older than me and a very large chunk younger than me. And so they may not quite understand why someone would be forced. And so I want to make sure that your reason is the same as mine to get on the Internet um, yeah. late at night after everyone goes to bed. And so for, for people like you and I, <laughs> the only way to get on the internet was when people would stop ringing the phone. That's right. And so you would That's have right. to wait until after telemarketers. There's only calling. one telephone line. You got to <laughs> wait till the parents are asleep. You yeah. can get on AOL dial up at get night. On the yeah. slide, put a, put a pillow <laughs> over the modem. Cause it made right. a racket. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Oh man, good old time. I hadn't times, thought about right? that in a while. Yeah. yeah right? That part is it's literally in the living room, you know, for most people is cause it's a mess. Oh, I got lucky. It was in my bedroom so i i had oh, i had that yeah. luxury but yeah. i'm i was i've done this a few times where i'm like what the heck was i reading at that time because i mm. now knowing what i do with my life now it's like i wonder what i was reading and so much of it has disappeared or the format has disappeared and it's like i don't even know what my influences were because <laughs> they no longer exist because the internet is ephemeral it was definitely tom 
you know that it was. It was just <laughs> only Tom. He's, he's my still, space a, good, Tom. He's still yeah. a good friend. He's still <laughs> yes. a good friend. So one of the questions from one of the listeners was was basically, you know, looking through your website, mm -hmm. and it's it's clear that there are a lot of things to be concerned with. And I think any honest Christian um, would would agree with that. I would have to agree with that. I don't see how you could. Yeah. But what are some examples? Um, because there aren't a lot, at least that I've seen on your site, yeah. that you're like, yeah, but actually this is a good thing where mm -hmm. there is a role. Like, do you have some specifics maybe yeah, even sure. recently of out of all of the craziness, mm -hmm. these things are doing it the way that maybe this should be used, whether or not you want to talk about Yeah, actually, here's or, an interesting yeah. story about it. So it, it's part of it is what's newsworthy too. And sometimes when a church does what a church is kind of supposed to do, it's it's not you necessarily a story. Swimming. Yeah, <laughs> it's not necessarily a big deal. So mm -hmm. you're right. It, you won't see a lot of it because I'm trying to triage and po po point out the like big stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I will tell you this. I found this interesting. I have worked with atheist organizations, nonprofits, advocacy groups for 15 some odd years. One change that has definitely happened, especially in the Trump era, is that when it's a legal group that does church state separation issues or religious liberty issues, but like not the fake Christian only religious liberty issues, but like the we want everyone to have the right to worship how they want to. COVID is not that thing. <laughs> like it's, we are all in this boat together. What I've seen that's interesting is on Supreme Court cases and various groups file their own briefs saying, hey, Supreme Court, you should rule this way and here's why. Like that's not unusual. They all do that. It used to be that we would file those on our own, that those groups would work with other atheist groups or church state separation groups and file those. What has happened is they now work with dozens at least, if not hundreds, of religious organizations fighting for those same issues, saying, look, on this case, this is not about religious freedom. This is about discrimination or something mm -hmm. like that. And they work with those religious organizations mm -hmm. with the belief that like, look, we do disagree about God. That is not unimportant. But on this issue, we are all on the same boat. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible change. I've so yeah. I've, And it's not just on legal things, but you see uh, I have highlighted this on the site and I appreciate it. There are a lot of times, especially right now, for example, I think hundreds upon hundreds of religious leaders, not just Christians, but all religious leaders would uh, issue statements or sign declarations um, about, for example, the Georgia Senate runoff election, because one of the candidates is a pastor, but he's getting pushback for like not being the right kind of pastor <laughs> or something like that. But they will say, look, this attack on his faith as if he's a bad Christian because he's a uh, pro-choice or something, we see that as an unfair attack on faith because faith does not say you have to do these certain, you have to take these political positions mm -hmm. and we're, and whether or not we agree or disagree with him, that is unfair. Like to have a bunch of religious leaders say, don't you dare attack someone for their faith criticize a politician for their actions and the yeah. things they actually support. Like that is an important thing. I have found myself like, this is one of the reasons I find myself caring very little, relatively speaking, about whether someone else is an atheist. I don't care anymore. Right. I used to, I just feel like that's such a low priority for me. And yes. it's because like, there are so many religious people that do good things and share my values. I think a lot of progressive Christians, for example, I probably overlap with them on things we care about way more mm -hmm. than they would with conservative Christians, yeah. you know? So it's like, yeah. well, then why am I arguing with them about any of this theology stuff when there are bigger issues that we can actually do something about? We'll save the the God discussion for like the, the late night drinking sessions at a coffee, but whatever. Like, are we drinking? Let's save it for I the are we Sure we are. <laughs> when we can go out again, like those are fun <laughs> discussions to maybe have in yeah. private or, or, you know, when things are normal, but yeah. when there, when you feel like the world's on fire, it's like, you know what, we'll set aside our differences. Let's work on this because, Hey, look, this Baptist group is doing some really good work on church state separation issues, or this church is doing really impressive charity work that doesn't involve discriminating against who they're helping. That's not about them making sure they're advertising for their church in the process. They're just saying, look, we're compelled by our faith to help uh, the least of these, 
that's not a bad thing. Why would I, why would I be mad about that? And by the way, that's what you should be doing according yeah. to your own rules. So like, yes. that's great. And look, plenty of churches do that. And by the way, they do it better than atheists do a lot of times. And yeah. they have the infrastructure to back it up too. But like, that's awesome. That, that makes it very hard for me to complain about religion. But like that stuff happens all the time. I'll give the credit where it's due there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So this is a question that I had reading through. Yeah. Um, is it, is Western fundamentalist evangelicalism because that's the yeah. bulk of what is being critiqued, um, and I don't need to really see. I disagree much. about that, but go on with. The, we'll we'll really? talk about that. Yeah, sure. yeah. Um, my question was: Is that just the low hanging fruit, or yeah. are they more in bed with? I'm going to say empire and politics, which is what will piss people off the most. Say that least. last part again: the empire and, and politics. Uh, yeah. So what I find, um, what I think, the biggest problem with the church is. Um, is a marriage to an empire, politics, mm. power, greed, wealth, money, as opposed to, um, you know, to, to paraphrase Jesus, like, you're doing this wrong, like, you're mm. doing this. Um, and even I was listening to a podcast the other day, like, a lot of the Old Testament is don't build wealth, power, and military. Yeah. And don't do that. And then every time you do, you 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 suffer. Like you, and you, we keep re perpetually doing that. And we happen to live in the biggest military superpower in the history of humanity. Sure. Um, so let me answer that in a couple of ways. Mm -hmm. I think if the only thing you ever saw on my site is me going after, say, Westboro Baptist Church, those low hanging fruits, mm -hmm. you would have a point because that's not representative of most Christians and how mm -hmm. they act or what they believe. And also, who the hell are they? Like, it's one church in the middle of somewhere that does this stuff. Or if I was critiquing, like, the independent fundamentalist Baptist churches, which do their own thing and aren't beholden to anybody else and have generally small congregations, even though there are many of them, mm -hmm. um, if that's all I did, I think that point would be fair. Here's where I think that critique is wrong. Um I think it is super important that we go after people in power when they're using it for bad reasons. And like evangelical Christianity, or even to some extent non-denominational Christ Protestant Christianity, has a lot of power right now mm -hmm. in politics. Or yes. Forget even the wedded to politics, but they have the ability to influence policy and affect our lives and the lives of other people. Um, is that what you would consider fundamentalist or like the Western fundamentalist thing. Like, I don't think yeah. that's low hanging fruit. I think that's like, that's where the power center is at. They represent millions and millions of people. So I that's don't think fair. it's unfair to attack them and criticize what they are doing and, and the hypocrisy that emerges mm -hmm. from that. But the other part is like, um, it's not that I'm ignoring other stuff either, but also I live in the U S so I have gotten critiqued by other atheists. Like you don't talk about Islam as much. That's well, where I was be, going with that. Sure. Uh, I mean, yeah, Muslims are not controlling the U.S. government and they're not telling mm -hmm. me how to live my life. Evangelical Christians are and they have the power to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it. The other part is I do cover Islam and I do cover when that goes off the rails in other countries and all that stuff. But in the U.S., where, again, in my world, everything is on fire right now, Islam isn't a part of that, you know? So, of course, it's going to get less attention from me personally um, on those issues. But I don't think I go after low-hanging Christian fruit. There may be posts about some people who are like, oh, well, it's a fringe dude. But I, I don't hesitate to call them fringe dudes. But I also, like, again, I'm thinking like Robert Jeffress, who is a pastor of a megachurch in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, who has the ear of the president and Fox News. Mm -hmm. That's not low-hanging fruit. That guy represents a lot of people. John Hagee, another Texas guy. Mm -hmm. um, like, I guess the, the thing I always want to scream back when I hear that critique is like, tell me the pastor I'm like supposed to be critiquing. I've, I've gone after Joel Osteen. I've gone after Rick Warren when he also deserves it. By Joel. Also I'm, by Joel. <laughs> How do you get blocked by Joel? So for, so for Joel, he would, um, he would paraphrase scripture yes. and then twist it to make a point. And then I would respond back. And so say it was you, like say, say you're on your side and you're just like, yeah ripping scripture out of context, I would respond back publicly saying, Hammett, I'm sure that you meant to include the first half of that sentence because you can't really start a point after awesome. the comma. You kind of have to, it's not just in the home for of the you. grave. That's and um, it was a few months later and I realized I haven't seen anything from Joel in a while. And then when I went to search for him, I'm like, oh, right. 
But I what I would get at is every time I would say like, well, look, I'm going after Joel Osteen. I'm sure some segment of your audience is like, well, he doesn't represent like true Christianity. He represents this He's type of Christianity. He's massive. He's massive. But they'll dismiss him as Christianity light or the prosperity gospel or whatever. But it's not the type of church they belong to. It's like, who who do you think is fair game? Because we mm-hmm. can play this game with anybody. So if I go, if I uh, criticize like the pastor of a mega church or three, it's like, well, no, that's low. Is that low hanging fruit or not? And yeah. I, I feel like it's not. And if it is low hanging, because it's like one dude on YouTube who says something dumb in the name of Jesus. It's like, I'm not hiding the fact that it's one dude. I won't hide that fact. Yeah. But when it seems to represent a bigger thing or a threatening thing, or an example of someone using religion to do something or do or say something awful, like, good. I'll, let me point that out. Let you defend that or not defend <laughs> it. Cause like, yeah. Hey, look, I'm all for Christians saying, Here's why that's like a perversion of what we believe. Yeah. Good. You should point that out. And let's let's agree that a lot of people yeah. twist scripture to do whatever it is they want, which is the point I am trying to make. I think most people do, myself included. I sure. often, well, yeah, we have a- but How many Christians it? have we all heard? I mean, who basically say, no, this is either, this is inerrant or there's only this interpretation. It's my interpretation. That's yeah. the right interpretation. It's like, yeah. I know, why don't, why don't you get together with the other Christians and you figure out which one is right? I'm going to go ahead and critique all of you the same. Um, yeah. But that's the thing, yeah. like it's, I think everyone considers all these other Christians who are not, uh, who don't share their mm, brand of Christianity. Mm-hmm. Like it's all low hanging fruit to every other Christian. Yeah. Um, and by the way, we could play this game with atheists too. Like I'm not defending the other atheists, but I'm also not going out of my way to say like, yes, that person's not a true atheist or anything like, no, that person is an atheist and that person is wrong. And let's go ahead and critique them. There's no should, issue. There. Yeah. I don't actually know. We should have started there. Yeah. What is an atheist? Like, how do you define that? Like, is it, I would is def- it as broad yeah. in general as a Christian or as a whatever, whatever, or like, are there levels? There? I guess like, the I definition I would use, uh, the non-philosophical answer here mm-hmm. is if you don't believe in God, you're an atheist. That's to me, that's not saying with like, I know for a fact God doesn't exist no, it's just saying, look, I don't believe in God. I live my life as if God doesn't exist. I'm open to the evidence, but I don't believe God exists. That to me is an atheist. Agnosticism, different question. Can we know that? Like, is there a way to figure that out? Interesting question. That's not what I'm talking about. So right. that to me is an atheist, um, which means there are atheists who believe in other supernatural things, which makes no logical sense to me. <laughs> I, I've heard this. There are atheists who believe in heaven. Like, it's a small percentage, but really? like, how does that does, make any sense? How does that work? It doesn't. That's how the do, answer. Does, which, which heaven? Like, I don't, that doesn't, I, yeah. That's, yes, you are, ooh, you are correct to be. I want to know. <laughs> I mean, and then the same thing applies where it's like, how, uh, there is a very small percentage, uh, bigger than like 4%, but a small percentage of atheists who say they oppose uh, LGBTQ rights. And it's like, on what basis? Because yeah, <laughs> usually yeah. to me, the opposition comes from a religious place. Hmm. And so to me, most atheists, most, I'm not speaking for all of them, I can't, but most of them are like pretty supportive of LGBTQ rights by and large, mm-hmm. but there are some who oppose it. So it's like, look, being an atheist, it is one answer to one question. And after that, we're all over the place. So it's like, yeah, there's yeah. a bunch of atheists out there. I, I'm not pretending to defend them all. I think a bunch of them are, are bad people with bad ideas. <laughs> um, but, I'm, yeah. but I think that's very different from people who are like, that person's a uh, fake Christian, not a true Christian, which I do hear from a yeah. lot of people. Yeah, well, I'm not a big fan of that definition yeah. of Christians because that's not really my job. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah I, exactly. I'm, yeah, I feel like I can influence my kids and maybe my neighbors, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. And outside of that, who am I joking? Like, just focus on the people that are in my circle right. and try to just not be a bigot and just love Yeah, people. I mean, that's be a good, decent person as best you can be. And yeah. then we'll talk about it when you're not like... Yeah. If you're a public figure and you're doing stuff like, yeah, fine. Let's bring it up. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I want to address two other things, and then I'm yeah. going to ask a question that may actually explode, but I ask it to everybody, and mm -hmm. I doubt um, it is not required reading for people to listen to any episodes of the show. So maybe you know I ask this, maybe you don't. It doesn't matter, but it may explode. Who knows? But um, the times that we live in now, um, just for context, you said you didn't know when this will release. I don't either, Emmett. Like, I okay. have no idea. Um, I usually upload things like four weeks at a time. And yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, just because I'm doing other things, and so are you. So I understand. Um, yeah. <laughs> And so um, at recording, so this is the day before the Georgia Senate runoff. Yeah. Um, and I did, I, I unintentionally since the election, I have disengaged from almost all political stuff just mm -hmm. because it was like sensory overload and I just so tired of it. Yeah. Um, and so as a religion overall, but you can talk about Christianity or, or other churches as well, but what is, it, what, um, how do I want to say this? So in, in a COVID world where outbreaks won't stop because right. people won't stop being selfish, what what burden does religion overall, do you think, just from your like reading all of these different news articles, bear in the non-containment of the same? Like how much humanity? blame do they deserve for it? Yeah, but not necessarily the Christian church, although I'm fine with that oh, as yeah, well. Yeah, but yeah. like as a whole, what what burden does religion overall do you think bear in the loss of humanity which i think is probably the inverse of what most yeah. people are trying to do in the us i mm -hmm. don't think it's i i we can't quantify it we don't mm -hmm. have those numbers i do not think it is a small number i think it's a large number of those deaths could be attributed to religion mm -hmm. i i would uh, we can argue about that one i think that's true because um for the governors who actually tried to do the right thing and shut things down and restrict a, a gathering public gatherings as much as they possibly could um who's fighting back against that it's i mean look schools are closed that's a good thing unfortunately it's just stressful. Um, it's stressful <laughs> as a parent yes it's very stressful but i understand that one that is a protection that's about safety i'm a coach at a school it's been so annoying trying to coach over zoom or something but whatever the alternative is not really there um and churches could uh, what i don't get is churches could easily have made the shift most churches could have easily said look you come to church because of community because the sermon and because you want to donate because of all these things it would not be hard today to shift online it's not the same. I know that, but you could. And in fact, most of the places file, it seems like most of the churches who file lawsuits saying like, you're discriminating against my religious freedom. Like those are the churches best equipped to move online. They already do everything online, or at least they post their sermons online and everything. But, but I think they don't make enough as much money when it's over online versus in person. I think that's a big part of it. Um, so when you look at who's fighting to open things back up before we're ready, it's not like every gym in town is filing these lawsuits. It's religious organizations. It's not just Christian ones. Orthodox Jewish ones have done it. Hmm. Um, uh, evangelical churches, non-denominational churches, I think I've seen are kind of the bigger ones on that list. Mega churches for sure. Yes. Those are the ones kind of fighting this thing. And again, here's where it gets hard because we cannot quantify this i'm sure you've seen the story like over the summer there was like a random wedding in like maine that became a super spreader event and the story there is as relatively small as that wedding was it happened there were people there without masks no social distancing and the the repercussions of that is that several people died who weren't even at the wedding yeah and that's just one case that we know about now imagine yeah. I've, and I've seen these pictures. I know a lot of other people have seen these pictures. What happens when there are mega churches at the height of the pandemic, which doing <laughs> doing rallies in Nashville, not yes. just rallies in Nashville, because I mean, maybe you make the argument those are outdoors, maybe, but also <laughs> they're also close together and they're yeah. not wearing masks. Yeah. But when they're doing indoor church services in defiance of local ordinances or fighting to open the doors, like, again, this isn't about trying to prevent people from worshiping do what so many churches have done. Just say, look, I know it's not what we want, but for the community we live in, for our own safety, let's commune online. Like, it, it's funny to me because, uh, it's not funny. It, the part that's funny to me is the idea that, what, 
if you don't gather in person, what's going to happen? What, God won't hear you? <laughs> That's not my understanding of scripture or what pastors say. Like, I'm pretty sure if you yeah. commute, uh, uh, gather over Zoom, God will still do the same thing of whatever he was doing in church. Uh, whether that's nothing or everything. Yeah. Like it's not going to make a difference. And so, yes, I do think it's very easy for me to say, here's a church trying to be to open the stuff up to spread COVID. That's the end result of it. Or fighting for that, even though it's not about the virus doesn't care what your faith is. Yeah. And again, the, there are plenty of people who are churches that have done this. And they have sacrificed, I mean, not just financially, but emotionally and personally, they sacrificed, but they did it because they understand how this virus works. Mm -hmm. And they listen to people who know how the virus works. That's the thing that infuriated me about all those, all the lawsuits and the churches who are like, we're going to, we're going to fight back anyway. And not just the rallies outdoors, like the, what did they call them? The, the Sean Foyt ones. The let us, let us worship. Yeah. Yeah. Have you no seen his shirt? Stopping. Have you seen his shirt? Oh, the super it? spreader. Yeah, yeah, I saw it the other day and I thought it was photoshopped. And then I, yeah. I looked for it. I'm it's like, real. this is it. How much money did this a-hole yeah. make I from mean, this damn shirt? And how many people got like, I, I have friends, close friends that yeah. people have died from COVID. And this a-hole. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just, uh, I just. I know it's infuriating. And the thing is, he personally will do those rallies where hundreds of people come together closely, no masks to quote unquote worship. And then he's long gone before he ever has to deal with the pain of whatever some of those people are going to suffer down the road. Mm. Um, and there's no way to do the contact tracing because <laughs> it's the United States. So like they come together for those rallies. Who knows what the super spreader effect is like? They go home if there was COVID present. Now, guess what? It's everywhere. And again, he's long gone before we feel the effects of that. I mean, to their credit, the people marching over the summer for Black Lives Matter and stuff, it's not ideal either, but they wore masks by and large. They socially distance as much as possible. And I, I believe I have seen studies that said we haven't seen super spreader events arise from that. Yeah. But that is, again, it's not apples to apples comparison when they say, well, we're just protesting, so it's okay. Like, God, that's infuriating to see. And I think, to my point, why I talk about that stuff, I think a lot of Christians would agree with me that no one's trying to stop Christians from worshiping. I respect that right to worship. Mm -hmm. That's a far cry from saying, yeah, gather in your church. Like, Muslims are not gathering in their mosques. They're not the ones filing these lawsuits. They found a way to make it work as yeah. inconvenient as it has been. So like, isn't that telling to some of these religious people mm -hmm. that are fighting it? Like other religions have found a way Figured to do it. it. Yeah. Jewish people missed out on their most holy days and they did it online. Um, and yet what Christmas, like what you can't do Christmas from home one year. I know it's not fun, but whatever, deal with it for one year. Have Can I two be honest? I have enjoyed have doing all that from year. home. I have yeah. really enjoyed. I, it sounds awful, but I have yeah. kind of enjoyed the way that we've done church because. But I also know that I have community outside of that because I've been really intentional in building online communities anyway. Sure. And um, you know what? When you get a chance to safely go back and see your church community, that'll be, be great. A wonder yeah, absolutely. It'll be, it'll be wonderful. Um, I felt the same way about coaching. Like I miss seeing those kids I work with. It's not the same when I'm working with new kids who I've never met in person. I've what do you only coach? met I coach public speaking, competitive forensics. Oh, I was thinking like, like basketball. Yeah, tennis, basketball is a different golf, story. Yeah. Something. Um, but like we've had to shift, like the whole thing is public speaking and communication, which you want the feedback, live feedback to mm -hmm. adjust on the fly. That's part of the skill. And it's like, if you're doing a funny thing, you need the energy from the yeah. audience that's listening. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. you can't replicate it when it's videotaped in advance, but we're <laughs> whatever. My point is you like, the best you, can. Yeah. you do the best you can. It's inconvenient. No one loves it, but we know this is the safe, right thing to do for everyone involved. And you know what? Next year, hopefully, we'll be able to do it in person again. If if we can do that for the statewide competitive circuit, I don't know why a local church can't do Zoom services. Like, deal with it. I. <laughs> everyone's in the same boat. You're not special. 
That's the episode title. Deal with it. You're not special. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so final question. Yeah. And, and just, I want to give it some context. Um, so I've had, I've asked this question of um, Buddhists and uh, Jewish and Christians. And, and so I'm just, I'm asking it to everybody. And the answers have been fun. I don't actually know what yours will be. Yeah. And that's part of the fun part. Um, some of them have been like three words and some of them have been soliloquies um yeah and that's fine 100 percent fine so for you when you try to describe what god or the divine or anything is what is that and um yeah yeah it's a good question it's not the stereotype of whatever man with the beard guy in the clouds that's childish um but as far as i talk about god i'm envisioning someone who listens to your prayers who is looking out for you who is watching over you who is going to be there in the afterlife for you. Um, that is not there. That mm -hmm. is the thing I don't believe in. Mm -hmm. um, so when people are praying, they're talking to themselves. They're not talking to anybody and no one's on the other end of the line. Um, that's the sort of uh, vision I have when I'm thinking about God, some supernatural force that exists, higher, higher power, however we want to describe that. I think what I get mad about is when people assume that and my interpretation of God is some cartoonish version of God, which is, it's like, um, I don't know if this is a fair analogy. It's like when creationists complain about pictures of Noah's Ark that are cartoonishly small with big animals because <laughs> it looks nicer on a coloring book. And they're like, well, the Ark would have been bigger than that. And it's, it's, it's wrong of you to assume this cartoonish form is what we believe. We are more sophisticated than that. Like, There's a uh, replica in Kentucky. I mean, you just I, go, I, right? Well, just go get oh, in that I'm thing. I'm so well aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> that has been in, uh, I have disproportionately written about that arc. Have you? <laughs> but, I need but, to spend my time there. <laughs> <laughs> but to go back to um, the, the God thing is like, I don't think my interpretation of it is, is a caricature or a stereotype. Like mm -hmm. at the very least, I think the God most Christians would believe in is one that is listening to your prayers and looking out for you and who has your best interest at heart, and you try to live up to God's standards, and you're going to see God later on. It's like, yeah, well, that's the thing. None of that. That's what I don't believe in. So uh, I don't fair think enough. that's a. I don't think that's a comical version of God. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I was curious when I when you said yes to come on. I'm like, well, I'm going to ask the question because I've asked it to everybody. Yeah. And I was like, what I don't do other know people what's, say? What's going to happen? There? Oh, they've said a lot of things. So I, I talked with one lady on apophatic spirituality, which is like literally you should not try to give words to God. Hmm. And so I was like, I realized like you should try to explain what God is by talking about what God is not. So think uh -huh. of it more like, um, more like, um, what do they call it? You call them maxims. What it's, okay. uh, that's not what you call it. So there's a way, like a philosophical way to, to, to try to explain something where you're like, it's not this, but it's more than this. It's not this. But like, so like if you were trying to, I don't know if axiom is first. the right word for that. I'm not sure. Uh, it, it, so I don't, it's not, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it wrong. It's yeah, too it's okay. But, um, but no, the answers have been great. One of my favorite was from um, uh, a, a Jewish um, author that basically is like, she's like, that's, that's hilarious. She's like, anybody that tries to tell you what they know what God is, is literally just crazy. That's mm. such a huge concept. She's like, but I'm going to give it a go, but let's just be really clear. <laughs> Nobody has any flipping idea. And right. then, but the answers have been, it, it, they've all been great. I've learned more from that question than some of the books that I've read because yeah. people have been really transparent and honest um, in those questions. So I've just really enjoyed it. I actually mixed it's interesting. It into the person, the first book I wrote um, many years ago, visiting those churches, mm -hmm. the foreword was written by a pastor. Mm. Um, I'm not trying to knock him, but he wrote uh, what I thought was a nice foreword at the time. And now looking back at it, I'm like mm, backhanded. I'm not sure about that one, but he basically said like, uh, Hammett realizes that, you know, the God that lives in the clouds and decides our stuff like he doesn't. Well, guess what? I don't believe in that God either. And I'm mm -hmm. like, that's not the thing I don't believe in. Like, of course, that's silly. But I'm talking about the God you believe in. That's silly, too. Like, that was what I was thinking <laughs> in my head. But I'm like, it looked good and sounded good at the time. And now I'm just like, I, I'm pretty sure you had a cartoony interpretation of what my atheism was like. Yeah. But whatever, that was a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, they've been fun. So I mixed them into, it was a few weeks ago was the episode yeah. um, for the end of the year. I mixed all of those answers Ooh, yes. into one huge episode. Yeah. And um, it was an, like an hour and 48 minutes long. And in my mind, I thought, 
Oh, it was only like 40 episodes a year because I do like every other week in yeah. the summer because I'd, I'd like to spend some time with my family. I was like, there's what? no way that this is going to be <laughs> longer than 30, 40 minutes. And then at the end, I was like, two hours. Yeah. What I have this? done that before what where a, a compilation of stuff that I think maybe 30, 40 minutes tops yeah. like, oh, oh, there was a lot there. I was in it an hour, like an hour and 10 minutes into I was like, what have I, what is this? <laughs> what have I, though the feedback has been. Yeah, been 10 good. minutes in, you're like, I've made a terrible mistake. But, but I'm committed now because I, yeah. <laughs> I put 50, I put a year's worth of work into this. This is happening. I, it's so funny on YouTube. I, st I was trying to figure out like, I, I used to do a YouTube channel. It's called The Atheist Voice. I did that with mm -hmm. a friend of mine. Um, everything was fine, but at some point, he was doing so much of the technical stuff and I had some big life changes going on. And at some point, a couple of years ago, I thought I want to try to do it myself um, with no disrespect to him, but it's like, I, I feel like if I'm doing this, like you are like, this yeah. is the thing I do. I, I should kind of know how to do it myself. Mm -hmm. So I started my own channel, not the atheist voice. It's just friendly atheist. And one of the things is like, well, in addition to talking about politics or religion or basic politics, current event stuff. Is there any evergreen stuff I can talk about that will be an interesting video several years from now? Because most of the videos are have an expiration date of a week. Um, and I thought, well, let me go through, you know, the first book of Genesis, because the Creationist Museum and all that, like, there was like, the, the truth is in Genesis. All right, you know what? I know that we only ever talk about Genesis one or two or the first few chapters. And like, no one knows what goes after that, unless you are devout and you read that stuff. Just some and sex so I, trafficking. And, yeah. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. And so I thought, let me go through Genesis one and two and point out the contradictions. That might be a fun little atheist video to make. And then I'm like, well, I can't stop it too. I got to do three because mm -hmm. it's tied together. And that's also like Adam and Eve stuff. So we got to get into that. And so I'm in Thessalonians. I was going to say, I'm, I just finished, uh, I posted 49. I'm about to finish up with 50. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, so you're going to move on to Exodus, right? I'm like, oh, Jesus, no, I'm never no, going to finish this no. now. Um, we'll do the I think... Catholic Bible. <laughs> that way you can get all the books in. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, once I got to like Genesis 4, I'm like, oh, no. What I have can't... I done? <laughs> what have I done? I don't <laughs> think I can stop because I'll hate myself if I stop now. Yeah. And then when I was done with Genesis, I'm like, well, now I can. Oh, no, I can't. I really have to go on because you don't you know, have to go in order. You should do um, you should I, do, uh, you should do like Jewish order. I like. did think about that. I'm like, well, should I just get to the to the big books? Um, but it's no, like you should well, just go they, in the you should go in the Jewish order, which is way different. It's, it's than never going to end is my point. So I have a YouTube series that's like a thousand three hundred parts. Um, <laughs> and I'm I'm one percent of the way through it. How <laughs> so, long are the videos? They're like 10 or 15 minutes each. How long? So it's, I know. It's so just like, I wouldn't ask a seminarian or anyone to like, look at it. It's mostly me saying, let's go line by line and read this thing. Mm -hmm. And it's how many one liners can I spout off after those one liners? <laughs> but I am going through it. And I am actually looking at commentary from Bible scholars saying like, mm -hmm. this is what this actually means. Because mm -hmm. like, again, I want to joke about it. But also I, I want to point out the symbolism or the... Yep the fair interpretations of certain things mm -hmm. but also this is kind of horrifying and like oh this guy was just killed why well, there's no reason given to us let's talk about that <laughs> um and it's it's been a good learning experience yeah. i will say huh i'm gonna dive into those because yeah. um yeah i'll dive into this like i said 49 part series and running right now <laughs> yeah i mean i'll dive in when you get to leviticus i'm gonna make you earn it <laughs> yes <laughs> so, yeah when... <laughs> when we get to revelation i'll let you know i'll be 97 but <laughs> you better hurry then yeah um where do you want people to go this sure is... if anyone's interested uh like i said the primary place that i dump my thoughts is friendlyatheist.com um, but if you if YouTube is your jam, search Friendly Atheist on there. If podcasting is your thing, search that online too. Um, but FriendlyAtheist.com, that's me. Perfect. Thank you, my man. Thanks for hey, coming thank on. Thank you, so Yeah, appreciate Not it. Not a problem.